Hey everyone, in this video, I'll teach you how to start running Facebook ads. If you're a brand new beginner, you can use this to actually start generating more revenue and sales for your own business and growing it. Or you can actually do this as a service for local businesses or other companies. And you can be a freelancer or run your own agency and use that as a way to bring more in revenue and, and get clients and provide them value. And the first thing you need to do if you don't already have a Facebook ads manager account is visit this link. I'll put it in the description and essentially just create an account and confirm your information. Now note, you also need a Facebook business page to run ads. You can't run them on a personal page. So make sure that you or a client has a Facebook page made for their company. And then you can actually use that when you're running your ads. But once you actually set up an account, what I want you to do is come over to here and this is Facebook ads manager where you'll be managing all of your campaigns, your individual ad sets and ads, where you can view metrics and data and performance. And it's a pretty big complicated system. So there's a lot of learning curves and things that you have to know, but with some practice you can actually be very proficient at it quite quickly. And I'll be showing you all the major, most important things you need to know. Now to start off, we have our campaigns tab, and this is the highest level of the account. This is where you're gonna have individual campaigns for different products, different strategies, maybe testing as well. You have the ad sets that are inside of your campaigns, and then you have your ads which are inside the ad sets. So it actually goes in this order right here, campaigns at the highest, and then ads at the lowest. On the left side here, we have our account overview, campaigns where we'll be spending most of our time, ads reporting where you can see and create detailed reports that update on a regular basis, audiences where we can start creating and managing our saved and custom audiences, ad account settings, billing and payments, you will have to add a credit card um, or a payment method to actually run Facebook ads, and then all tools where we can see almost dozens of different settings and different things we can use for our Facebook ads. But we wanna keep this kind of high level in general for this video. So the first thing we're gonna do is click this green create button. And we have some things here. So the buying type is either auction or reservation. I recommend leaving this as auction. This will get you the best results. And editing this is more of an advanced thing we can cover in a future video. You then have the campaign objective. So what is this campaign trying to achieve? There's awareness, which you can see is good for reach, brand awareness, video views, store location awareness. We have traffic, engagement, leads, app promotion, and sales. Now, in general, if you're trying to drive conversions and revenue and get customers, always stick to sales. You wanna remember that depending on the options we choose, that's gonna change the kind of traffic and people that we actually get seeing and viewing our ads and engaging with it. So for example, typically, if you use a traffic option, you're gonna get traffic that doesn't convert as much, but you might get cheaper clicks um, and more people actually clicking on your ad and engaging with it. But if you click sales, it might be a bit more expensive sometimes, but you get people that are actually going to buy. So really think about what you're trying to achieve with your campaign. And then typically you'll be choosing either sales um, or leads. If you're doing lead generation, you're trying to follow up and prospect um, and get leads that way for your business, then leads is a really good option. But for this sake, we'll do sales. And then if we go down here, we can name the campaign. So I'm just gonna name it campaign number one. Now, if you had an actual product or promotion or something you were trying to do, you would align it with that. Try to have a naming taxonomy and something you can use consistently just to stay organized. And if anyone else goes into the account, they can understand it. The ad set, I'll just name it ad set number one to keep things simple and then add one there. So we chose auction, sales, we named it. Let's click continue. And now we also have the campaign setup options. Now we can do an advantage plus shopping campaign, which is really good for e-commerce. And as a rule of thumb, you should be split testing a lot of the different options in here. There's best practices and things you can do that are proven, but at the end of the day, nothing really beats testing for your individual audience and business. But again, to keep things simple, let's actually do a manual sales campaign. And this will allow us to really tweak the options and what we get. Let's click continue. Now, the first thing we see here is special ad categories. Now, if your advertisement is for credit, employment, housing, social issues, elections, or politics, you will have to choose a category in this case, and in most cases, you won't need to do this. So we can skip that. So again, we have the auction type. We're doing sales. We're not using a catalog. We have some more options here uh, that we don't need to edit right now. If you want to have an exact spending limit, let's say you only want to spend $100 total, you could click edit, add that, and then put a limit. But for now, we're not going to do that. We have A-B testing. I typically do manual A-B testing, but you could technically create an A-B test um, and then later on in the ad set options, you would essentially upload multiple versions and then it'll test against one another. Um, but once you become a little bit more experienced with Facebook, you can actually do it manually just as effective. Now, Advantage Campaign Budget. I personally recommend keeping this on. As you can see here, it will distribute your budget across currently delivering ad sets to get more results depending on your performance goal choices and bid strategy. Really, this is gonna optimize where Facebook puts your money and your budget for the best results. So I always recommend keeping that on. 
Um, at the end of the day, we're not going to beat the machine and the algorithm and the AI that's really built behind this. So try to work smarter, not harder, and use these features and these tools that are available. And then we have the budget that we can set. There's either a daily amount, which most of the time that's what you'll be choosing. But if you want to set a lifetime budget, if you had a very specific amount you want to spend across the lifetime of that campaign, you could do that. But for daily budget, let's just imagine $25. Um, and again, your maximum daily spend is $31.25 and your maximum weekly is $175. Now, remember, this is going to be an average depending on your cost per lead and other factors. Just keep in mind that there is some volatility to this amount right here, but typically by the end of the week, you're spending the amount that you, you actually put in there. And there is budget scheduling as well. If you want to schedule budget changes depending on the day or time, again, once you become more advanced and you really know your business and what you're doing on Facebook ads, you can use these features. But for now, we'll just keep that off. And I should mention we have the campaign bid strategy. So there's a couple different options here. There's highest volume, which I recommend you keep on. This will get you the most uh, amount of results for your budget. And the longer you're running campaigns and the more data we feed Facebook, the better the campaign performs. So highest volume tends to always be the best. Now, if you actually know your cost per result goal, you know exactly how much you wanna be spending on a lead to acquire a customer. Cost per result can be really good. And I do run this actually in, in a lot of different lead generation campaigns. Um, but for now, we'll keep highest volume. And there is other things too, like ROAS goal. But we'll probably actually cover those in other videos because it can get very advanced. So once again, we'll keep highest volume. Ad scheduling, we're gonna keep those running all the time. We don't want them to turn off certain days or hours. And then what we can do is click next. And we're gonna go into the ad set level now. And the first thing is the conversion location. This is essentially where we're actually gonna track conversions. Is it on your Shopify store? Is it on your WordPress website? Is it in a messaging app? We have website and app, app if it's on maybe a mobile app of yours, calls if you're doing specifically phone call conversions, or most likely it's gonna be on your website. And now if it's on your website or these other third party locations, you will need something called a Facebook pixel or a meta pixel now. And essentially it's a piece of code that lives on your website and allows Facebook to track all the performance on Facebook. And when those clicks and people leave the platform, Facebook can track that information and report it back on the platform. You can see exactly how much your conversions cost, which ad sets and ads and campaigns are performing the best. And you will have to set this up. Now, depending where you're actually trying to convert people, again, if it's on your website or your store, um, Shopify, WordPress, a lot of these platforms have apps and plugins that will actually help you do this very, very easily. And when you set up the conversions too, Facebook gives you some steps to go through and they kind of help you with the process. So it's not as complicated um, as it once was. It's a lot simple and streamlined, but you will have to create that pixel. And then we have the conversion event. So what are we actually trying to track as a conversion? Is it people adding to cart? Is it people purchasing? Is it leads that we're generating? Depending on the campaign objective, in this case, it's sales. It'll change what we can see here. Because as you can see, there's a couple things down here that are grayed out. But what we'll do in this case is purchase because if we were, let's say, an e-commerce brand, we're trying to sell a product, uh, we want to be tracking exactly who's clicking our Facebook ad and actually buying the product. And again, once you set up that Facebook pixel, um, I'll leave a link in the description for some, some notes on that. And then if we scroll down, we have dynamic creative. I always recommend keeping this on. What dynamic creative allows you to do is upload multiple images or videos, multiple primary text and headlines, which I'll show you in a moment. And then Facebook will essentially put them together in different combinations, send those to audiences, and it allows you to find the best performing combination of those different elements with your creative and your messaging. And I always recommend keeping this on. Don't upload too much uh, media and images because it can just take longer to test and find a good variation. Typically people do the 322 method, which is three images, two primary text, and two headlines. That's what I do as well, and it performs very well. So I recommend definitely keeping that on. Uh, budget and schedule, just keep this default unless you wanted to have a different start date and end date, you can adjust it here. Once again, budget scheduling, um, ad spending limits. For now, we're gonna keep that off. If you do have any kind of uh, qualms with scheduling or spending limits, you can edit it there. And then we have audience control. So this is very, very important. We can actually choose the exact locations we wanna show our ads to. Maybe you're doing e-commerce and you want to target the United States. You could put that in there and then maybe we want to do Canada and the United Kingdom. And now something you can also do is write down to zip codes, you can do DMAs and you can also add locations in bulk. So if you already have maybe a list of zip codes, DMAs in different locations, you can choose them in here. So for example, let's just choose zip codes. You can choose the default country and then you would paste them in here and then match and upload. So you can also bulk upload uh, your targeting, which is really good. I also highly recommend using Advantage Plus Audience. 
I find this is really good at getting better targeting, uh, lowering your cost per lead and cost per acquisition. And then if you have custom audiences, which if you're new to Facebook, you won't have them right now, but you can upload them in there. And you can also add in some detailed targeting to this. So it's not all just location-based. You can also do interest, demographics, for example, if you type in something like that, maybe a personal shopper, engaged shopper, you can type in any kind of interest like bathroom architecture, individual brands. So if they're interested in that, that can be really good. I typically leave the detailed targeting here empty. Um, I just do broad targeting. Again, the technology and the machine learning is so advanced with Facebook, we're not really gonna beat the machine. So you wanna keep it as default as possible in most cases. Again, you can do your tests and maybe you'll find some better performing options and variations. But for the most part, I go very broad and that tends to do the best results. And then we have our placements. Now, I like to use advantage placements, which essentially, again, is gonna allow Facebook to find the best placements versus Facebook, Instagram, uh, Messenger, third-party uh, audiences and networks, and then it'll find the best out of those and you know, put more budget and priority, and it'll get better results that way. But if you did wanna just run ads on a very specific locations, you can click Manual Placements, and then you can choose. We have Facebook, Instagram, the Audience Network, and Messenger. Audience Network is um, third-party apps and websites that are in Facebook's ecosystem, and you can have ads running on those. And then even right inside each one, you can maybe say, okay, I don't want ads on the Facebook feed or stories and reels. You of course would, I can't imagine any scenario where you wouldn't want ads running on those, but just to show you, you can get very detailed if you wanted to there. Um, show more options. We do have some other things here uh, with brand safety, inventory filter. These are more advanced. I wouldn't touch these for now. We can hide those and then we can go to next. And also I should just say, um, your audience selection here, don't worry too much if it's you know too small or too big. Um, typically, the more niched in you are and the smaller audience, it can actually be more expensive. And the more broad you go, typically it can be a bit more affordable and cheaper. But you do also see your estimated audience size, which in our case, um, targeting the US, Canada, and the UK with our options is 383 million. And now here what we have is the ad name. We already, of course, named it ad number one. We have the identity. So choose your Facebook business page here and also the Instagram account if you're running ads on Instagram. Again, we're using the Advantage Placements, which includes Instagram, so you have to connect to that, which I already have. We wanna make sure we have that ad preview. And of course, we have no media or anything kind of entered in yet, so we can't see. We have Creative Source. Um, we'll be manually uploading our images. The format, we can do a single image or video or carousel where there's essentially two or more and they can scroll through. And then multi-advertiser ads, they recommended it. I typically keep this on. I haven't had really any issues with it. I've done some tests with it on and off, never really saw too big of a difference, but you can see here, enabling this may increase your ads exposure to people in a shopping mindset by allowing this ad to appear alongside ads from multiple businesses. Again, I've done some tests. I haven't really seen a big difference with it on or off, so I just keep it on and Facebook recommends it. Now down here, we have the ad creative, which is the actual image or video. So we can either select an image, select a video, or actually create one right on Facebook. So let me just add an image in here and show you how this looks like. So I just added an image here of me. You wanna keep this option on to optimize creative for each person, vary your ad creative and destination based on each person's likelihood to respond. And then we have the primary text and the headline and the description, along with some other things here. Now the primary text is the main part of the messaging and the copy that they put. So I was gonna put example, just so the right side here updates and you can actually see what it looks like. And I'll just put something in here, just as an example. Get copywriting services that help grow your business and drive, drive more revenue. Get a free quote today. Just as an example, not an actual product or anything like that. And again, with the 322 method, we would actually wanna put in two more images now that I think about it, so let me do that. Okay, we added those, and then we want two primary texts. So we'll say, get a free quote for copywriting services, and then the headline, get, a, get copywriting services now. Click headline option for that second one, free copywriting quote, let's just say. Now the description, I normally don't even put content in here because this essentially only displays um, when they view it in very specific placements and devices. And I find I can usually keep it empty uh, and you don't need it. Now the website URL, you definitely need, and this is where they're essentially going to land after they click the ad. So let's just put my website here. So we'll say carmen.com, we'll do that. And now because we have the website URL, 
you can actually see a preview of the ad and how it would look like. We have the image there. This is the primary text. We have the headline. We can also change the call to action. Right now it's learn more, but it could be book now, contact us, get quote, do something that's relatable to your business and essentially your campaign. I usually keep learn more. That's pretty universal. And we can also change the display link. So they might land on this website URL, but we can actually change it to, let's say slash quote. You can actually change the display link, maybe just to provide a bit more information um, that can actually help with the click-through rate and people clicking your ad and visiting the page and converting. Uh, so we have all that website URL, display link, we have that. Okay, again, the pixel. So once you set up that, you'll see it down here, you'll select your pixel. Um, and now this one isn't active, it's an old account I'm using as an example, but uh, when you do have the pixel running, you'll be able to choose it there. And then essentially that is your ad. You've created the campaign, you've created the ad set, you're using the 322 method for the best performance and optimization. You made your ad. You can see it previewed over here among different formats and in different ways it can uh, appear to customers and you're good to go to click publish. And then once you click publish, it'll go into processing mode where essentially Facebook system um, will essentially look at it, make sure it's all up to code and everything's good. And then it'll actually publish it. Now, once you actually have your ad running, I wanna show you some other important things on Facebook Ads Manager. Okay, so we're back to Facebook Ads Manager. We created that campaign. So you can see it right here. If I click it, there's ad set number one. And if I click that, there's that ad. Now, of course it is in draft mode. I didn't actually publish it because it's an example, but once yours is published, it'll go into processing and then it'll be pushed live and you'll see that. And now some other couple things I wanted to show you um, is actually the metrics here. And this is the default performance metrics. You see things like your budget, your cost per result, amount spent, uh, when it's ending, your link clicks, cost per link clicks, CTR. And now if you wanna edit this, you can actually go to these three lines right here. We're in performance and clicks, but you can also go to customize columns. This is where you can add more different things or even remove things. So for example, if I don't really wanna see delivery, maybe I don't want clicks, attribution setting, things like that. I can then apply that. And you can fool around with this and, and get it just perfect for you and your individual campaign and business. But for the most part, you're tracking your conversion rate, your click through, cost per click, CPM. These metrics are pretty universal and everybody's looking at them. And another thing I want you to pay attention to is the breakdown. Now, if we go into a campaign and we click this right here, we can actually break down um, how our ad is performing, uh, ad sets as well by different things like our headline, our placement, our actual creative as well. Now, of course, this ad isn't actually running, so we won't have data, but you can essentially start breaking down by time, demographics, delivery, all these different things, and get really good insights into how each ad set and campaign and ad is performing against one another. And I like using this because I'm able to see, okay, a very specific creative is performing the best, and I can use that and put a more emphasis on it, use it in other campaigns. Maybe that certain headline is getting the best results, um, a certain placement is getting most of my budget and things like that. And it's really insightful data you can use to improve your existing campaigns and the future ones you launch. Again, if you click reports here, you can actually create a new report. This is something that will update continually. You can put very specific metrics into it in different settings. So that's where you can actually start looking at your reporting. And if we go back over to the left side, I want to also tell you about, if we go to all tools here, you're gonna see some really uh, important things. So we have ads manager where we're currently at, ads reporting, you'll definitely spend time there. Audiences is where you're gonna create your custom and lookalike audiences. It's a bit more advanced. I'll have a video on that in the future, but also events manager. I want you to go here and create your Facebook pixel and connect that to your website or your app. And again, I'll put some resources in the description to help you out with that because it's a very important step. And a big part of Facebook advertising is actually tracking your data and your conversions because if you're spending money, you of course wanna know that you're getting a good return on that. But this essentially is how you can start setting up Facebook ads um, for yourself and your own business or even a client. We'll have some other videos in the near future that cover more strategies and advanced things in depth. And you can use those once again to just better your Facebook ads knowledge and just generate that much more revenue and results. And if there's something you wanna learn about when it comes to digital marketing, copywriting, and similar topics, just let me know down in the comments. You can subscribe if you're new to Facebook advertising and you wanna learn more. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you learned something about Facebook advertising and I'll see you in the next video.